I'm Ashley Martin. I'm a second year resident and I'll be giving an interesting case presentation about a pediatric patient who presented with altered mental status. For our history, we have a 17 year old who was previously healthy, spent the night with friends at a party and awoke with multiple episodes of vomiting, uh, noted entire right body numbness and was seen to have intermittent periods of unresponsiveness as well as altered mental status. Ingested three alcoholic beverages and a history of marijuana use, but none that evening and reportedly had migraines associated with drooling numbness and dropping objects in the past. More recently on ultrasound was found to have an enlarged thyroid gland that needed follow up with endocrine in the outpatient setting. So the differential diagnosis for a patient, pediatric patient with altered mental status is broad but could be thought about in different categories including psychiatric illnesses, structural abnormalities, vascular issues, drugs, metabolic syndromes, infectious diseases, and others which would include seizures, complicated migraines, or alternating hemiplegia. In the outside emergency department, patient was noted to have a GCS of three, but was protecting the airway. Labs there showed a white count of 26.2 with a left shift, a lactate of 6.8, and normal thyroid studies. Lumbar puncture revealed one red cell, one white cell, and clear fluid otherwise. CT scan of the head showed a right internal carotid artery focal calcification, but no additional acute findings, and the patient was started on vancomycin, ceftriaxone, and acyclovir before being transferred to our ICU. Upon arrival, the patient was conversational, but agitated with multiple questions, complained of photophobia, phonophobia, was sleepy but responsive and oriented to person but not age. There was weakness in the ulnar distribution of the right fingers, the right arm was numb, and the GCS was 10 at that time. Additional workup performed with neurology recommended treatment for migraine headache, as well as obtaining MR imaging and ruling out vascular anomalies and other issues with extended lab testing. Infectious disease recommended continuing antivirals and anti, uh, antibiotics at that time, but there was a low suspicion overall for infection. MR imaging ultimately went on to reveal a large left posterior circulation acute infarction involving the left cerebellum, PCA territory, and thalamus. There was also a left posterior cerebral artery occlusion. Patient was placed on aspirin, 325 milligrams, and started on low molecular weight heparin at that time. So we're gonna be talking about pediatric stroke, and half of the strokes in children were related to ischemia, whereas 80 to 85% occur in adults. Children also have a larger and more diverse set of risk factors associated with stroke. 10 to 25% can die, 25% will experience a recurrence, and 66% of children will have a persistent neurologic deficit, including seizure, learning disability, or other developmental problem. So for epidemiology, it's rare overall with an incidence combined of 1.2 to 13 cases. It's probably underdiagnosed and misdiagnosed due to a low level of suspicion and mimicking other diseases frequently. With that though, the reported incidence has more than doubled in the past decade, and we see it more often in boys and black children, even when accounting for sickle cell disease in those cases. With presentation, you can think about it in different age groups, with infants being lethargic, apneic, or hypotonic, toddlers having a general deterioration and nonspecific symptoms, with older children having specific deficits, such as hemiparesis, language or speech difficulties, visual defects, and headache. It's also possible to think about it in distribution by arterial blood flow. So a PCA stroke will likely have vertigo, ataxia, nystagmus associated with it, an MCA stroke having hemiplegia affecting the upper limbs, hemianopsia and dysphagia, and an ACA involving lower extremity weakness. All of these will present with the eyes deviated toward the lesion. For a bulbar dysfunction or dysarthria presentation, you wanna consider a brainstem stroke with the eyes deviated away on presentation. In addition, if you see fever or lethargy, you need to consider venous sinus thrombosis or irritability, bulging fontanelle, or meningitis type symptoms, a subarachnoid hemorrhage might be the case. Differential diagnosis is also broad in these patients. We can often see metabolic abnormalities, both common and uncommon, one being hypoglycemia and the second being Mellis syndrome. Complicated migraines could be a possible etiology. You could have alternating hemiplegia, which is a uh, half body deficit that usually recurs over hours to days, as well as in intracranial infections, and neoplasms at the same time. A 
risk factors and causes associated with stroke. Cardiac disease is the most common with one third contributing to ischemic stroke. Sickle cell disease would be an example of hematologic issues. Infections both, both common and rare, including parvovirus, varicella, meningitis, and even cat scratch fever could be a possibility. Could have an arterial venous malformation, Marfan syndrome, or homocystinuria. Kawasaki disease, or HSP, could contribute, as well as any intracranial tumor, lymphoma, or prior radiation therapy. Trauma resulting in a carotid or vertebral artery dissection, or hyperextension or rotational injury could also cause a stroke, as well as illicit or prescription drug use. For treatment, typically we use fever control, glucose and oxygen management and normalization, ICP management, treating dehydration, correcting anemia, and controlling systemic hypertension. We want to obtain a non-contrast CT, CT angiogram, MRI, ECG, chest x-ray, echocardiogram, and extended labs to rule out any coagulopathies. Your treatment will depend mostly on the etiology, either prevention of re-bleeding or preventing subsequent ischemia with anticoagulation. TPA has been considered in children with uh, venous sinus thrombosis in select groups, but this is by case report and case series only. If you have a sickle cell patient with ischemia, you want to consider hydration, simple or partial exchange transfusion, and if it's a subarachnoid hemorrhage presentation, go searching for an aneurysm. Our patient's outcome is continued improvement at this time, though there are challenges with reading and also reporting uh, hemi, hemi, homominous hemianopsia in the right upper quadrant. Memory issues, decreased sensation on the right side, and a still unknown etiology at this time. Some theories have been uh, with the fibromuscular dysplasia in the carotid artery, artery possibly having a dissection in the PCA territory, but this would be atypical. Uh, drug use resulting in a hypercoagulable state by prescription, and then illicit alcohol and drug use combinations through partying and other interventions, though the patient denied this. So in conclusion, stroke is low relative to adults, but is a distinctly different entity. It's a challenge to create evidence-based guidelines, and we do need more randomized controlled trial trials related to pediatric populations specifically to help diagnose and better treat this condition.